Good morning, Great Little Cove. From the WCA TV studio, I'm Alex Mazzignani alongside Jonah Perry, and these are your morning announcements. All teachers are asked to send their Thanksgiving basket donations to the CSC at this time. If more items come in throughout the day, please send them to the CSC. The baskets will be assembled today after school, and all items will be sorted throughout the day. Thank you for your donation. There has been a temporary change to the after school library hours. The library will open after school today, but it will not be open after school tomorrow. Remember to sign up online if you wish to stay. Overly's Country Christmas is currently seeking volunteers and groups to get involved and help continue their Westmoreland County family holiday tradition. Community service hours look great on college applications and resumes, and Overly's would like to give students the opportunity to earn those hours. Please stop by the 11th 12th grade office student waiting area for more information. The first Science Olympiad meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 21st, after school in Mrs. Hoop's room. See Lauren Siget if you have any questions. Do you have plans of being a teacher? St. Vincent College is offering Foundations of Education to high school seniors and juniors. The course will be held on campus Thursday evenings from 4 to 6.30 p.m. The course runs January 15th to May 10th. The cost is $225 for three credits and the textbook cost is $100. The deadline to register is December 14th. Stop in the 11-12 office if you are interested. The free SAT and ACT National Practice Test weekend is happening on November 18th and 19th. This free interactive live online event lets students learn the differences between the SAT and ACT, then try sections from each test to see which is a better fit. Students will see their scores instantly and learn effective test strategies from our team of experts. Pre-registration is required by using the following link, www.captest.com slash practice test weekend, or you can stop in the 1112 student waiting area for more information. Now here's Michael Dunlap with the weather report. Hi, hello, good morning. What's up, y'all? How is everybody on this fine and dandy day? Good? Great, I'm glad. I've been a WCAT TV weather reporter for almost an entire three months now, and it seems like this just began yesterday. Ah, uh, how time flies when you're having fun. Well, I suppose I should begin to explain what I'm here for, and that's the three-day outlook in the fine science of weather. Today is going to be wonderful. We predict today to have a high of 50 degrees and a low of 39 with partly cloudy sky. Tomorrow is going to chill up with ar the Arctic frost and a 60% chance of water falling from the sky with a frigid high of 41 and a low of a, a much below tepid 29. And finally, Friday, which is a fun time because, well, it's Friday, we'll have a high of 48 and a low of 39 with more partly cloudy skies. But if you're inside seeing the play Friday night, hint, hint, you won't particularly have to worry about those chilly temperatures so much. That's all for the weather today. Back to y'all. Thanks, Michael. The Pennsylvania School for Global Entrepreneurship at Lehigh University, now known as the Lukoka Global Entrepreneurship Intensive for High School Students, the University of Pittsburgh Health Career Scholars Academy, and the Penn State Pennsylvania School for Excellency in Agriculture Sciences, which are all former governor school programs are accepting applications for current sophomores and juniors. Please see Ms. Hager in the 11th 12th grade office for more information. In addition, the Pennsylvania Governor Science for School for the Sciences summer program will be held again this summer at Carnegie Mellon University. Applicants must be a current junior at the time of the application. Please see Ms. Hager for more information. The Girls Who Code Club will be meeting this Thursday after school in room S-104. We will be back after this commercial break.
There will be a drug awareness forum at Ligonier Valley High School on Thursday, November 16th from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. This event will provide practical information on drugs, specifically opioids. A panel of speakers, including Westmoreland County Detective Tony Marcucci and Westmoreland Drug Overdose Task Force Director Tim Phillips, will detail what drugs look like, common hiding places for drugs, and how they are affecting the community. Local organizations such as Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission and Gateway Rehab will also be in attendance to discuss services available to the community. All are welcome to attend. UPS will be in all lunches this Friday with some job opportunities. Clarion, Clarion University will be here on Monday during all lunches. Now here is reporter Devin Watson with an in-depth look at the Chain Reaction Contraption Team and their goals for this year. Every year, Westinghouse sponsors an event called the Chain Reaction Competition where schools build chain reaction contraptions and show them off in a tournament at Carnegie Science Center every December. Last year, the school placed first out of 44 schools with their lock and unlock project based off the Loch Ness Lake in Scotland. I talked to the new team to find out what some of their challenges they face this year and what some goals they want to accomplish this year to win the competition for the second year in a row. Some goals that I have for this year is to really uh, take a leadership position on the team, being that uh, I usually have a good time in leadership positions, so I'm hoping to go for something like that this year. Some goals I have this year are to uphold Lee Trobe's legacy. We took first place last year, and I'd like to see us do that again. Uh, winning. We're working on a jury-themed uh, multi-step um, project where it's going to end up the whole machine's going to tip over on a balance, so it's hopefully that'll be a nice grand finale for the whole project. Some basic rules for the competition that students must follow are, one, the project must run no less than 30 seconds and no longer than two minutes, two, you must label each step and have an approximate 20 steps in the project, three, the final project can't be any bigger than three feet by two feet by five feet, and four, on the day of the tournament, no more than four kids must present their project to the judges and must be prepared to answer questions and to describe the machine itself. Um, I think the biggest challenge for us is probably being uh, inexperienced as a team. Even though we have one person who's, who has more experience than others, still just having that mostly all-rookie team is going to be the hardest. It doesn't feel bad. It's going to be a bit tougher. We're going to have some bumps in the road. It's not going to be exactly an easy feat to make it first place, but I think we can do it. It seems really difficult because we all really don't know a ton about what we're doing, but we're hoping to combine all of our knowledge together to be able to do something really good. If Leitrobe can come out on top again this year, it'll be the first time Leitrobe has come out on top two years in a row. The team will find out if they can pull it off on December 8th. For WCAT-TV, I'm Devin Watson. Reporting for WCAT-TV, this has been Gianna Ferry and Alex Bizignani. Thanks for watching and have a great day.